G'day fakes, it's um, Charlie, Charlie from the Yobbo channel, uh, Jen's channel. Hey, look, we get a lot of requests of, uh, you know, how, how do we catch our crabs? And, you know, if we use hook and we get a lot of requests of uh, people asking us, can we please, please? So, look, we'll, we'll do uh, a video in some detail to show you uh, what we do and how we go about it so look um, if you have a look around obviously you've got to pick a mangrove lined area and it's low tide and the the tool that we use I mean this is just a bit I usually use stainless steel instrumentation tube this is solid uh, aluminium you know you can go down to your steel manufacturer and you'll see I've got a my hook here is about, that's about 50, 55, 60 mil. It's probably around uh, 80 degrees hook, so it's not much. Now, I've been doing this for a long time and, you know, do I go a little bit more, do I go a little bit less? That's me and does me well. You can see I've got a little, what that does, you can see that it lines up with the hook. So when the hook goes in the hole, actually turn it and I know exactly where that tip of that hook is. So look there's a little bit of an art to it. Look it's not difficult. Uh, you see I've just come up to a hole just here and these are the signs you look for. You can see there's lighter coloured mud and you can tell on the previous tide that there's likely that there's actually a crab in here. Now we've just done a very small area here now, you know we've come up with probably half a dozen holes um, this is the first one we'll go and have a look so look um yeah we'll give a little bit i hope it's of some benefit to you again there's a little bit of a knack to it um, but it's not difficult to do So you can actually hear, hear that there's actually a crab in there. And you can see that I'm using this part to turn because I'm trying to get the hook over some part of the crab. And see, so I've got him locked there now. And I should be able to just pull him, pull him out. Okay, you see, it's got one, so it is a buck, I can tell by the nipper. And look, um, there's a possibility the hook will let go and you've got to keep persevering to pull him out. And look, I don't do it often, well, I probably do do it more than I should. I can see where his nipper is and I'll actually just put my hand at the back of the crab and pull him out. You know, look, I don't recommend people doing that. You know, we had a young lad with us just the other week he got his first crab on Jen's first crab adventure with him and he's gone and stuck his hand down there and pull out a big crab and you know upwards and onwards to him but yeah look if you're going to put your hand down there um, it takes a little bit of knowing what you're actually doing you know if a crab was going to latch onto you it can be an unpleasant experience so you see I'll reach down so I've got my hook I've got a little bit of pressure on him. I'll get my hand to the back. So I've got my hand around his back now. There you go, it's only a small, small buck. So I don't know if you're watching this from the other states. I mean, Jen will probably post this on the Port Hedland Fishing and Crabbing. But if you are watching from another state or territory, crab size is over here. This is a brown. Uh, browns are 120 and greens are 150. 
So, Brown, this would be illegal, but look, we're after a few good quality crabs, you know, three or four, and that'll be us. So it's important to people, you know, it's not to dig the holes out, you know, if we do any damage to any hole at all, or is that make good? Righto, let's go see if we can find another one. Okay. So you can see from this hole here, it's only two meters away with Jen. There's another hole there. You come over here, this is what they look like. There's another hole here. You know, we've got football fields and football fields in this sort of country. Well, further north, further south, it's just kilometers of it. So I call this stuff geotechnically, I don't think it's called coffee mud, but um, that's what I call it. So it's the sort of texture of mud that makes it easier for crabs to tunnel their burrows into and for them to stand up. So I'll just show you some examples of holes here. So that's a good size hole. That's a good size hole. Come around here. There's another good size hole. Holes there. So you have a look at the sort of country, you know, be it up a creek on the creek banks or out on the flats, we just find it a little bit easier, you know, on the foot. Uh, you might want to ask, you know, all, all this, all these dead vegetation and it's sort of, you are like, I can't put my finger on it. You can see all the new mangroves growth out there. If it's got anything to do with cyclones so seasonally this area here is cyclone alley we get i think seven cyclones on average a year which five that make landfall and i'm not saying i'm a local here um we're we're from the northern territory um, i think they've got the same average of cyclone landfalls over there so yeah it's sort of like what makes the crabs be here um well it's the food source and you know if i can remember correctly it's about um 50 of a mud crab's diet is uh shellfish and if i could show you any rudiments of shellfish out here so this is being dragged outside a crab hole here they're only small but you know 50 percent of their diet that's what they eat and uh so 50 percent 30 percent is their they're cannibals so they actually eat, eat themselves uh, crustaceans and other crabs and uh, remarkably uh, the last 20 percent is uh, vegetation um, mangrove leaves being their favorite but thinking all the the rotting vegetation here I mean I haven't looked into it too deep so there's another little hole here good size what brings them here again it's the it's the coffee mud um, that gives them that shelter here on the flats I mean the tides here you know they go 7.2 meters I think which is the biggest king you know there's not a lot of shelter for them so you get to areas like this and they're more or less condensed you know we've seen uh, many many crabs along here just as the, the tides come in walking um, yeah, we do get the greens, we get the browns, and uh, being that they are green, we get this purple blue type as well. And every now and then we'll get a rainbow, so a rainbow is uh, uh, a predominant crab that you'll get over the Indo Pacific way that will find their way down down on this side of the coast of the Pilbara. Okay, we'll keep going, um, we'll follow Jen, she's pretty keen. She's hungry, I think. So Jen's got a shorter type hook. Um, that's a little one that she she likes, actually. I mean, along with the holes, uh, they tend to go around corners and all sorts of stuff. So you could be there for quite some time. 
so you can hear the metal hook making contact with the shell of the crab Just slowly bringing it out, putting a little bit of pressure. Charlie might put his hand there. Whoa. There you go. Uh. So you can see the position of the crab. No. Yeah. So you probably see where he was there. Is that I would tend to put my hand around his back and pull him out. Jen's too scared. <laughs> yeah. If you see how big it is, you wouldn't want to put your hands on it. So, you know, for us, you know, living in the Pilbara, we do like to get out and about, you know, get out of that house. Um, it's time together. And, you know, the bonus is, is that we're breathing the air out here. And the bonus of getting a few crabs to take home. And for miles and miles and miles, you know, there's not another footprint around here. So the area is pristine. The old Slater dog. It is winter time. He's he's shaking. <laughs> you know, there you go. You're just there. Get a little bit frustrating. It's not, it's but that's grabbing people it comes too much you know just move on and look for another hole no i wouldn't move on well, with this jen's one. not moving on to this one she's <laughs> after this crab but she's seen the size of the nipper <laughs> and this is one that you know you're not wanting to move on something like this <laughs> i can't just get hold of it properly there you go. Okay. Did you grab it? Okay. Yeah. Right here. Wow, oh, you see that? Mm hmm. It's about an average size. Sweet. Yeah, I'm one. Pretty good. He's good. Heavy? Yep. Yeah. Well, I claim this to be mine. Even Charlie helped me out because I'm the one hooking it. Right? So that's the reward, people. Um, you know, look at look at Jen's tool. Uh, there's not much to it at all. We'll get two. Two. We've only been here for what 20 minutes. Uh, we will tie that one. Ah, uh, yeah. We're only going to be. Uh, Getting another, you know, two, two more. More, that's enough. That's, that's enough for us. Enough for family. Two more. I'm go okay. <laughs> so we're waiting for the crab. You know, again, one of the rules are for hooking over here in Western Australia is that um, the hook you use should be of non-piercing um, you don't want to damage injure you know fatality mortality of the crabs uh, gaff hooks not a good idea and spears uh, you know not a not in favor for spearing crabs whatsoever you know um, how do we know you know you got to be somewhat experienced to know from the top of a crab if it's male or female the size if it's got eggs and also you know is it full is it a quality crab so you know for the purposes of using spears you know i i, I don't recommend spearing at all and uh, uh i'm not aware if it is illegal or illegal in some states or territories but for us you know the tools that we use again just talk about non-piercing hook for the purposes of just looking after the crabs if we don't choose to take them so there's a good example of a hole nice fresh mud it's been dragged out from the previous tide Jen girls just over here she'll go and 
see if anyone's home. So she's got a short hook and a longer hook. Jen's made contact with the crab there. So what Jen's trying to say is that, you know, the holes just don't go straight. Sometimes they go to the right, sometimes they go down, sometimes they go to the left. So it's, they're just not all straightforward. And again, you know, you can another hole here. If they're not uh, gonna mess around too much, just move on to another hole. Let's go. <laughs> another hole I might have to put this camera up a bit managed to get him to the mouth of the hole but the mouth of the hole is small so again look I don't recommend it to everyone it's later um, you know to get the crab out just feel where it is around the hole I mean it's a big hole but the entrance is not that big so the way I've hooked him is sort of like on an angle but he's just there back of him yeah he's sort of like get him sideways so he can come out of the hole not a monster We just got this one out of there in you know not even five meters there's another hole there 
this Jen tapping away. She's just using a, a smaller hook. I think another, you know, one or two crabs. That'll do us. We've got a family of four. Plus Jen's Filipino and she's got Filipino friends. Got one of her friends, Tintin, that takes care of Woody sometimes after school. We both work full time. And if you're watching this in tin, <laughs> Jen's got a crab for you. There's probably a lot of wind, so it's, you know, the audio is probably terrible. One thing I probably didn't mention, or Jen didn't mention, was, you know, uh, with what we're doing, if we're watching it from interstate or uh, another state or territory, I know it's legal in the Northern Territory, uh, I mean, not to walk in uh, Queensland, I'm not sure about New South Wales. But for us over here, um, hooking is allowed again, a non piercing hook. Um, yeah, not a big advocate for spearing. Uh, we're not allowed to use crab pots uh, here, you know, uh, Northern Territory on the east coast, Queensland. You know, your primary catch of mud crabs, you know, recreationally and commercially is by pot. So it's a little bit different over here in Western Australia. Look, we, uh, if you're watching this, Ken, Ken's one of our local crabbers in town, Port Edland, in the Pilbara. Very successful using the, the, the dilly type arrangement. Uh, if you follow him on um, Port Edland and fishing, you'll see that he's very successful that way. So Jen's got a crab here, and we just got one out of this hole here. This one will do us. Him, eh? Sort of, just the arms. So Jen's pinned him just on the corner again. Smaller entrance. So she's got him just on the corner there. Just be careful because it's phasing. You would have. I'm feeling his nipper. Well, he's facing so. <laughs> Felt his nipper. Obviously, you know, he's pinned, but it's the wrong position for me to put my hand down there. Yeah. So Jen would have another go to get him out. I'll stand by. So, not really good examples of how to hook a crab out of a hole. Um, you know, every now and then the, the hole does get obstructed. So Jen's got him, you know, to, towards the entrance and she's pinned him. So again, have an attempt to feel his position. <laughs> you still got my hook. Mm. So you can see, you know, I actually felt that first and run my hands down and I could feel those spikes there so I knew that was the front of the crab. And just run my fingers down the back and just grab him by the back flippers, slowly pull him out. So look, this one's just size, but you know, we only want one more crab, eh? Yeah. We'll go look for one that's a little bit bigger. Jen's pinned him again, so we've got this log, again roots, obstructed. We get the hook down, but can't get him out. Jen's pinned him there, so here we go again, arm down the hole. <laughs> arm down the hole. <laughs> Gotta use my other arm. He's facing straight on. <laughs> Yates. Uh, okay, so you're gonna have to get him in the another position. I know there's lots of logs and stuff. Timber. 
But no. Nah. Yeah, try that. Okay. Slow the thing. Jesus. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> hey, 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 hey. <laughs> It's just there, right there. Okay, I feel him. You feel him now? Mm-hmm. Okay. Okay, I got the back of him. How big? Not that big. You're missing a few legs. That's because of the roof. No, they've been missing for a while. Anyway. That's it for us. That's it for us. <laughs> Thank you for watching. <laughs> yeah, look, uh, for the, well, many that you know requested can we make a video of how we go about it you know it's always about the what but the how I hope that gave you a little bit of an insight you know it's it's not that difficult um, I mean look where we are you know, it's not like you get bogged in the mud and this that and the other and you know, most important is that you know you're getting out of the house spending time together and the bonus is that you know you sit down and have some grabs to eat Okay, we'll catch you next time.